Yes, um, good afternoon students. I welcome you to this uh, lesson of agriculture. Um, I know it has been quite long, uh, but I am glad we are continuously getting feedback from you people. Um, the, the last lesson, you looked at um, risks and uncertainties. It was taught by the other teacher. Um, I know you still remember what risks are and what uncertainties are. Um, I'm talking that because in our main business for today, which is agricultural marketing, there's an aspect of the risks and uncertainties. So, uh, just to give a small reminder, uh, we said that a risk is a situation in decision making where you can predict a happening by probability while an uncertainty is a situation where you cannot predict what are the future. Now, agriculture, like I told you the other time, is these days being carried out as a, a source of income or a source of revenue and there is no way we are going to get revenue from agriculture if you do not market the products that we produce. So that's why we decided that today we, we get a good understanding of what agricultural marketing is, what it entails and uh, whatever is concerned in regards to, to this topic here. Now, when you look at marketing, marketing as uh, a concept we always have a misunderstanding. Many people think that marketing is just the, the, the selling and buying of products. Marketing goes beyond that. It's not just selling and buying of, of products, but far many things are involved. In fact, buying and selling is the last aspect of, of marketing. Now, when you talk of marketing, what you mean is the processes that a product goes through from the time it is produced on a farm up to the time it reaches the final consumer. For example, if I were a farmer and I was producing maybe my okay cassava, now marketing involves me taking that decision to produce the cassava, going into production of the cassava, I harvest the cassava, I prepare that cassava, I transport the cassava until it reaches you who buys that cassava. So marketing goes beyond just buying and selling, but to include a wide range of activities. So I want us to have that clear right from the beginning that marketing is different from buying and selling. Though buying and selling is part of marketing. Like I'm saying, it, uh, it involves decision making on what you're going to produce, going into production of that particular item or commodity that you want to produce, up to the time that product reaches the consumer. Okay? Well, if you can see on your screen there, we're saying that, yes, it goes beyond buying and selling to include your planning and it goes beyond production to include all activities that are carried out in order to move this product from the farm till it reaches that final buyer. That is what marketing is. All those activities involved in the movement of the product from the farm up to when it reaches the final, uh, the final consumer or the final buyer. Now, in the movement of those, uh, the commodities from where they're produced on the farm up to when it reaches the final consumer um, involves a number of activities, a number of business activities, what you call uh, marketing functions. So all those activities, all those business activities, all those things that people do to move a product from where it is produced to where it is going to be consumed, those activities there, 
are what you call marketing functions. They facilitate marketing. Because you are not going to produce a product on your farm and you don't carry out these marketing functions and you think the product is going to reach the final consumer. Okay? So, those different business activities that are involved in the movement of a product or preparation of a product from where it is produced up to when it reaches the final consumer or the final buyer. We call them marketing functions. Now, in agriculture, as you may realize, that most of our products are produced in the village areas, but the good markets are in the urban centers. Have you ever bothered to wonder how these products reach there? How do they reach there? How, do, how, how does someone get to know that there is a product X being produced in such and such a place? Okay? So all those activities that are involved in the movement of this product or in the preparation of this product before it reaches that final consumer, we call them the marketing functions. Now when you talk of ma uh, marketing, we cannot avoid marketing functions because marketing cannot take place without the different marketing functions, all those different activities that help or facilitate the movement of the, the produce from where you're producing till it reaches the final consumer. Now, there are many of these marketing functions, but we need to understand them. And I want us to try to move in order so that we know which one comes after which. Okay? Though there, there are many of them, but we need to know which comes after the other. You can see there we have a number of examples of these marketing functions, things like processing, grading, packaging, transportation, advertising, and the like. We are going to look at each of these functions one at a time and we get to realize how they are important in the marketing process. So without wasting much time, let's begin looking at these different uh, marketing functions. Now, the first marketing function I'm talking of here is processing. Now, students, if you, if you realize, most of the agricultural products are not consumed the way they are in the garden. Okay? When you harvest a product, you, ca you don't just harvest and begin consuming. Sometimes some of these products need processing. And processing may involve um, sorting the product, uh, maybe cleaning the product. Take an example. You have harvested, let's say, beans. You have harvested beans. You are not going to take the beans just the way they are, the, the way they are from the, the garden to, the, to, to someone to buy. There are things you have to do. You have to remove the chaff. You have to remove the, the foreign bodies from, all the foreign materials from, from those beans. Take another example. You have harvested cassava from your garden. You are not going to take that cassava with all the soil and offer to someone to, to buy. Someone will, will, will not buy yours. If, uh, like I always tell you, when you're, when you're, we're in a competitive, we're in a competitive uh, world and many people are producing these same products, you need to have ways of having an edge over your competitors. So, like you have harvested cassava, we can process that cassava by removing the soil which is on that cassava, so that by the time it reaches the final buyer, he's comfortable with the product that you are presenting to him. Now, processing may go beyond just sorting and cleaning, but, okay, it can go beyond just uh, sorting and cleaning to include uh, changing the whole nature of a product. Now, let's have an example here. You have harvested milk. You may decide to offer the milk for sale in its raw form. Or you may decide to process this milk, change its form, get other products from it, for example, cheese or, or butter. Okay? So those activities that you do, okay? those activities that you do before you offer this process, the, okay, the product for sale can fall under what you call processing. So in simple terms, it is preparing that product, preparing what you have, to offer for sale. Okay? So processing is a very important marketing function. It's a very important activity that we do or we carry out during the marketing process. Okay? Then two, the other example of a um, marketing function or cultural marketing is grading. Okay? I know you are very familiar with this word grading. Just like 
try to remember when you're in school, maybe like during your time of promotion from senior three to senior four, you were graded. Now, grading means putting products according to quality. The products of the same quality are put together. That's what you call grading. And it's a very important aspect in agricultural marketing. Take an example. You have harvested maybe uh, tomatoes from your garden. The tomatoes you get are not going to be of the same quality. There are those that are going to be good. There are those that are going to be relatively good. But there are those that will be bad or damaged. Now, as a wise farmer, when you're, when you're offering these products for sale, you need to grade them. Like, when you, for example, maybe a parent sent you to, to the market to buy tomatoes. You will realize that where they're selling those tomatoes, they are graded. There are some, they will tell you, we have t five tomatoes here for 5,000. Then others will have 20 tomatoes for 5,000. Another person will be selling 70 tomatoes for for 5,000. But they are not of the same quality. They are not of the same grade. So grading means putting products according to their quality. And it's very important. You may be wondering, how do we grade these products? You can grade the product based on how the level of ripeness, if, for example, of a fruit, maybe the taste, uh, the commercial value, maybe the juice content, depending on whatever you want, okay? Now, the other issue is, you may be asking yourselves, now why do we grade? Now, grading facilitates is the pricing. When you grade the products, and by the, by the time you tell someone, this lot is this much, and the other lot is this much, the person will clearly understand why you are charging different prices for the same, uh, the same products, okay? So when you grade pricing becomes very, very easy for you. Okay? And grading can also help to avoid spoilage. Okay? Now, like, when you are handling these fruits, okay, maybe like tomatoes or pineapples, you realize that if you put damaged tomatoes together with those that are not damaged, even those that are not damaged are going to get spoiled or they will get damaged. Okay? So, grading is very, very important and it's a very important aspect of uh, what we call agricultural marketing. So after processing and grading, we have another marketing function called standardization. Now, to standardize just means to put quality or quantity specifications on a given item. Putting quality or quantity specifications on a given item. Okay, students, I know your home. There are many products that you may be having at home there that you were purchased. Okay, take an example. If you bought like uh, a kilogram pack of sugar, okay, a kilogram pack of sugar. Now, on that pack, they are going to indicate the quantity of sugar that is there and the ingredients that were used to make that sugar. Okay, now, why is standardizing important? This is standardizing is very good because it helps farmers, it helps people, it helps to maintain constant price of the same product in different parts of the country or in different areas. Now, if you have, for example, a one kilogram pack of kakira sugar, okay, that kilogram pack may be 4,000 shillings, whether in Kampala or in Jinja or in Barara or in Arua, if it is one kilogram pack of kakira sugar, the price is going to be the same, okay? So it, it allows uniform pricing of the same product. Take another example. You have five liters of cooking oil. Maybe mommy has bought cooking oil. Five liters. Now, if it is five liters of maybe Mukwano cooking oil, they will indicate on the jerry can that it is five liters. Okay? It is five liters and this oil was made from this, this, this and that. So that in case you are buying that product, you know the quantity of the product you are buying and the ingredients that are present in that particular uh, in that particular product. So that is what you call standardizing. Then after standardizing, the other marketing function is what you call packaging. Packaging is very important. Now, packaging just means um, 
putting products in containers you have produced but you decide to put your products in containers during the process of of marketing okay putting products in containers is what you call marketing now a container can be plastic it can be a sack it can be okay what you are putting that product in is what you are calling a container here okay so this packaging why is it important we do packaging for a number of reasons okay now if the product is well packed or well packaged what is going to happen is that it is going to consume or take less space for example if you are transporting let's say maize from one part of the country to another part someone who transports his maize in sacks is better off than someone who just puts the maize what would you call live on the what uh on that on the, maybe on the, the the transporting facility is using maybe like for example a fuso or any other car okay so packaging reduces bulk then the other thing is that if a product is packaged it is easy for you to handle it okay just have a funny um, uh, um, try to have a funny imagination if you are for example selling maybe let's say maize maize grains there's no way you're going to carry the maize grains if they are not in in a package okay so it facilitates easy handling and it also helps you to easily identify to easily identify the quality or for you to know what exactly they are buying because on those packages they always indicate okay the quantity uh, the manufacturer the ingredients so you buy knowing what exactly you're buying okay then the other advantage the other good thing about this packaging is that those packages since they have uh brands on them for example um i know you take yogurt you can have yogurt written on jessa yogurt okay so after you have consumed your yogurt that package can advertise can help to advertise that product because whenever someone sees that package you will read on it jessa milk or fresh dairy milk and that creates awareness about that product and that's what you call advertising here okay so packaging like i said putting products in a container it's very important like we're saying there are other advantages there but i want you to go further and try to think of any bad sides of packaging any bad sides of packaging yes i know some of you are thinking of this things like it can make the product expensive that is true because uh, those containers I are not cheap to make they can increase the price of uh, a given product but i want you to have a uh, deeper thinking of any negative things to do with uh, the packaging then after packaging the other marketing function is transport or transportation now students i want you to 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 reflect a bit um in the urban centers here just like around your school we do not see very big plantations I know you enjoy rice too much or a lot at school here but there's no rice plantation around the school here where does the rice come from okay so uh, farmers produce their products very far away in the rural areas in the village areas but these products reach us okay how do they reach us through transport or through what you call transportation products need to be moved from where they are produced to where the consumers can uh, can have them now without proper transport or without transportation you can't market your product okay because you need to move now i'm in kampala i may need to sell uh, maybe like at home i have an apiary um i i get honey maybe i want to, uh, to 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 supply honey to my colleagues at school here to my fellow teachers but my apiary is in arua how does the honey reach from arua to to the school here it is through trans transport or through transportation now why are we why am i overemphasizing this point of transport you realize most of the agricultural products are perishable that means they do not take long before they go bad okay so transport is very important if you don't pro transport the products early or within a given period the products will get wasted before you offer them for sale 
any delays result into reduced quality of the product and when once a product has a lower quality then you can't price it highly and yet our objective here is to make uh, to make uh, profit okay so related to transport there's another marketing function we call storage now as you are moving products from the farm maybe down there in guru by the time it reaches kampala here it it it, it would have store it would have been stored in some some way at least okay so um, storage is very important because it helps to prevent wastage okay or damage of the products there's no way you're going to, to 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 be marketing a product and you don't keep it in a safe place you don't store it well what is going to happen is that it may be attacked by pests or it can be damaged because of uh, uh, poor weather okay and once you store these products well you can uh, we can achieve constant supply of a particular product throughout the year okay you realize that in uganda here we have about two main um, seasons so when it is off season where do we get the products we get products because they were they were stored well so storage is a very key uh, marketing function as well okay and then we have another market market the marketing function what you call market information or market in intelligence or market survey now market information or intelligence or survey just means getting proper information getting data proper information or data uh, regarding different aspects of of the market okay maybe demand for a particular product the supply of a particular product the price of a particular product that information regarding the market is what we call market intelligence or market information now market information or intelligence is very important as well because as a farmer like i always tell you you need to find ways that enable you to get as much profit as possible because you carry out agriculture to make money okay so do some market survey we carry out some uh, market intelligence find out prices find out prices of the same product in different markets you may realize that a product may be cheap in nakawa when it is expensive in nakasero or it may be cheap in nakasero when it is expensive in intinda get information so that you supply your products you take your products for sale at places that offer better money for that the what the products so gathering of that information about demand prices and the supply is what we call market intelligence or market information or market survey it's very important because if you if you don't have proper market information you are going to sell your products at low prices and yet they would they would have been better prices for you if you are taking the products to other places then the other marketing function is what we call risk bearing yes remember when i was introducing this i talked about uh, risks and uncertainties now when you are moving these products from where they are produced to their intended area or to where they are supposed to be consumed or sold many things happen along the way there are many risks involved there are many uncertain things that may may happen okay products may get damaged uh, products may get spoiled others may be stolen others may be destroyed so uh, during the movement of those products there must be someone responsible to bear those risks like when you are boarding it may be maybe okay i know many of you have traveled when you are boarding like a plane maybe you are carrying very delicate items like electronics what they will tell you to do there's a form they give you to sign that please uh, sign here in case the product gets wasted or gets damaged along the way it is not our problem the problem is yours because you want to transport your product what you will do you will sign now when you come back to agriculture here I know they must have told you ways of uh, guarding against these risks okay so when you are moving the products from the farm to where you are going to sell them there must be someone in charge there must be someone you are going to ask this and this happened who caused it okay so there must be someone in charge there must be someone to bear those 
given risks okay and this can be an individual or it can be a marketing agency so it 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 really depends okay then the other marketing function is uh what you call advertising i know you have heard of this by the way, some of you may have even advertised the products for for given farms or for your 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 your, your farms okay uh, the last time I was uh, uh, attending one of these uh, the, the computer uh, episodes of these lessons of yours, um, we were talking about uh, how you can market pro uh, products maybe like through email. Now, it's a common thing these days. You you sometimes receive messages and from people that you even didn't give your numbers to. You wonder where they got your numbers from, or even from companies. They begin sending you. Uh, um, products that they are they are offering okay advertising here in this case means creating awareness about a product creating awareness about a product i gave an example that i have my apiary in arua and i can decide to offer for to offer it to offer the honey for sale to teachers at school here how do they get to know that i have the the, the, the honey i advertise it Okay, I can come and tell them, please, uh, people, I have honey, good quality honey. I package it well. Okay, my honey is of good quality. I package it well. It is not diluted. It's not adulterated. It's a pure honey. There, I'm advertising. I'm creating awareness about the product that I have. Okay, now advertising is important, especially when the product is still new in the market. Okay, if the product is still new in the market. It's, there's need to create awareness. There's no way people are going to know a product that you're offering when you have not advertised the product. Okay? So, down there, for example, if you have your, maybe you have your uh, broilers there, you are, you are rearing the maybe broilers, there's no way your friends are going to know that you have broilers. Advertise. Okay? Let create awareness. Let them know that Yes, people, colleagues, have braiders of good quality. And when you're advertising, you package it well. You, you, you give positives. Okay? Have braiders, um, purely fed, no, no, no drug, no much drugs. Okay? They weigh maybe about three, four kilograms. They're not too, too young. They're about to eight, ten weeks old. There you're creating awareness so people will begin co contacting you about the broilers so advertising is very important also because it creates awareness about our products that we produce okay so that we can offer them for sale at uh, uh, good prices then there's this aspect of financing very very key if you realize if you qu can try to remember most of these uh Aspects or the marketing functions we have talked of involve spending. Okay? Most of them involve spending. Advertising involves spending. Transportation, spending. Processing, spending. Okay? Grading, spending. Market intelligence, gathering information, money. Now, this financing as a marketing function is very key because it supports all the other marketing functions because all the other marketing functions may require money okay so without proper financing you cannot be able to carry out the other marketing functions that uh, we listed above okay so at all stages i want you to realize that at all stages of marketing money is involved finance is required you need to put in money if you are bearing risks Maybe you pay an insurance company so that in case anything happens, they compensate you. You are advertising. You're not going to advertise for free. You're going to put in some money so that people get to know your product. Okay? So in summary, uh, of this, uh, regarding these marketing functions, we're having a summary as you can see on your screen there. Um, I've tried to summarize them there, but... Before we go to our ne next aspect, I want us to have a proper understanding of uh, these different uh, marketing functions. So processing is like uh, preparing okay, or changing a product to make it more suitable before you sell. 
grading. We said it means putting products according, grouping products according to their quality. Then standardization. What do we say standardization is? It putting quality or quantity specifications on products so that when you are buying or when you are selling, it is easy to convince someone because you can know the, 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 the quality of the product and the quantity of the product that are offering for him. Uh, then the other is packaging. We said packaging means putting products in containers. Putting them in containers. Get your maize, put the maize in, in a sack. Okay? When you get the milk, put the milk in a jerry can. Okay? It facilitates uh, easy marketing. Then transportation, we said products are produced far away in the villages, but they have to reach the, the market centers. How is that done? Through transport. They have to be moved from where you are producing them up to where they are going to be offered for final sale. Then there's a storage, putting products in a, in a, in a, in a particular well-designed structures to avoid wastage, to avoid spoilage. Okay? Then market information, gathering information regarding prices, regarding demand, regarding supply in different markets so that you get to know where you can offer your products best. And we always offer our products best at areas where they offer better money for the products. Okay? Then risk bearing, I said that as these products move at, on, at these different stages of uh, uh, at, at the different stages of marketing, risks are involved. They can be stolen, they can be damaged, some can go bad. So there must be someone in charge. Okay? Then advertising, we said this means creating awareness about, this, our, about our products that we are producing. Then financing, I said financing uh, is very important because it facilitates all the other marketing functions. So we have talked of what marketing is. We have talked of what the different marketing functions are. But there's another aspect I want to introduce to you. Now, when you're marketing these agricultural products, we realize that there are some pro uh, problems that are particularly associated, that are particularly unique to these agricultural products. And we call them special problems in the marketing of agricultural products. Okay? We call them special because they are unique to these agricultural uh, products. Now, many of these prob the problems we are calling special here are not a farmer's making. They are beyond the farmer. Okay? But what is supposed to be done? The farmer is, should not just give up. Okay? We shall always find ways of handling these problems. But before you go to how we handle these problems, let's first know what these special problems are. So, the following are the examples of some of the special problems in the marketing of agriculture uh, products. The first one is bulkness. Now, you realize very well, most of the agricultural products are bulky. Okay? They occupy big space. They, now, most of our products are of low value compared to their weight. Okay? They are of low value compared to their, to their weight and they occupy a lot of space. Now, remember we said the products have to be moved. They have to be transported. It's, very, it's not easy to transport products that are bulky because it is expensive. Okay? The second problem with the marketing of these agricultural products is that the agricultural products are perishable. Okay? As you can see on your screen, agricultural products are perishable. So the problem is the perishability of these products. They can't last long. We are not going to keep them there forever. They get they, they, they get spoiled within a short period. Most of the agricultural products have a high moisture or high water content. We can't keep them for, for long. So what happens is that because of fear of making losses, you can even end up selling them at prices that are not ruminative. Okay? So you need to, be, uh, you need to, need to realize that if you are to, to avoid the losses, you either process them or market them as fast as possible. Sometimes you may want to do that and you are unable. Okay? Then three is the, the seasonality. Most of these agriculture products are seasonal, meaning that during some parts of the year, they are there, and during some parts of the year, they are not there. Now, what does that mean? During the time when a product is on season, for example, now as I talk, it's January, uh, in Uganda here, now we have a lot of pineapples. You can buy a very big pineapple now 
at a very low price because there is surplus, there is excess. The farmers have nowhere to take the, the excess pineapples. So what they do, they, they are forced to reduce the, the, the prices of these products. So the, uh, the problem is the seasonality. Then, if you can see on, the, on, the, on our next slide, the other problem with marketing of these agricultural products is that the special problem is that they have a long production cycle. Some of the, pro the, the, the what you uh, market or what you sell take long before we get them. For example, the perennial crops, the bananas, about two years, pineapples, about two years. You, you plant, you have to wait for two years. And within this period here, many things happen. Prices can go up, prices can, can drop. Okay? So a lot of things happen between the time you plant and the time you, you harvest. Now, when you are planting today, assuming I've planted a perennial crop today, which I'm supposed to harvest after two years, it is very hard for me to guess the price or to estimate the price at which I will sell that product after two years because two years is a long time. Okay? Then the other challenge with these uh, agricultural products is that they have an elastic demand. Remember we said an elastic demand is demand that does not respond much to changes in prices. Most of agricultural products are for survival. They are basic necessities. Food. Okay? So changes in the prices do not affect uh, the quantities demanded that much. If in a home I'm eating, okay, my family maybe we are eating two kilograms of rice in a day. Whether the, the price of rice increases or decreases, I'll buy two kilograms. Okay? So they have inelastic demand. Then the other challenge or the other problem with marketing of these agricultural products is that they are of mixed quality. Okay? Agricultural products are of mixed quality. You cannot get tomatoes of the same type throughout the country. Okay? You can't have pineapples of the same type throughout the country. You can't have broilers of the same type throughout the country. Some people are going to produce products of high quality while others will produce products of low quality. Okay? And because of that, when you are marketing, you cannot have a particular price. That's why in Uganda here, it's very hard to have a particular price for an agricultural product because they have mixed quality. You may say, we should sell five tomatoes at 3,000. When another person has very good tomatoes, you say, I will sell only three at 3,000. And another one, you have tomatoes of very poor quality. Okay? So this issue of having mixed quality is a very big problem when it comes to marketing with these agricultural products because you cannot have a uniform price for these products okay then the other problem is that there are many producers there are many small small producers scattered all over the country okay many peasants around many people are producing the same products and because of that remember these different people have different problems okay these different people have different problems it is very hard for any one of them to influence the price because i may decide to sell at a given price x but someone decides to sell at a given price y i'm in kampala selling at price x someone is in masaka selling at price y okay now because this the, 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 the producers are many it's very hard for any of them to determine a price because there are other people also influencing the price. Then transport costs are high as another problem here. Like we said, most of our cultural products are bulky. Moving them is expensive. I think that is uh, self-explanatory. Then we have price fluctuations. Okay, Prices of our cultural products are never stable. Now during, during harvest time, the prices drop drastically because everyone is having the same product. And during off season the prices are high because very few people people have so these fluctuations in the prices are not good because they can even affect your planning as as a farmer then the other is difficult of storage remember these products are bulky two they are perishable now how are you going to store them bulky don't occupy a lot of space perishable cannot stay for long but you need to store them they are not easy to to store if you are going to store them uh, in a good condition, you have to invest a lot of money 
in order to have a good storage facility and most times it is not easy to have this good storage facilities then agricultural products are affected by factors that are beyond the farmers control or natural disasters okay the quality can be influenced by the weather pests diseases and the like and because of that the farmer does not have much control over the products that is going to to offer for sale now if i may ask you if i may ask we have looked at these problems perishability bulkiness we are difficult in storage disaster and the like if you were to if you were a farmer how do you have overcome these problems that's what i want you to think of okay that is an assignment that i'm giving to you try to think of ways that farmers can use to overcome these problems our pro our products are seasonal our products are perishable they are not easy to store they are difficult to transport okay they are bulky what do we do what can the farmers do to overcome these special problems of um of agriculture uh, marketing okay so there i have an assignment for you there you can see i want you to suggest possible ways that farmers can uh, use to overcome these problems then uh, i want you also to look at try to look at the, the, the government try to see what the government has tried to do in the second question here try to see what things the government has tried to do what things that the government has tried to put in place okay in order to improve the marketing of these agriculture uh, products so uh, please after this get some time and try to to answer these two questions and like i said you always we are always willing to to get feedback from you when you try you can give us feedback so i want us to turn our attention to our last aspect of today which is uh, price fluctuations in in agriculture now you realize that like I, I like i said before prices of agricultural products are never stable they keep rising and falling by the way price fluctuation does not mean falling of prices it means rising and falling rising and falling not just falling to fluctuate is to be unstable to keep changing to keep rising and and falling okay so prices of agricultural products uh, fluctuate a lot that's a fact they are never stable during harvest time the prices drop during off season the, the prices go up okay so um, and these fluctuations occur as a result of a number of uh, reasons or causes okay so our main issue here we are supposed to try to think about what are the main causes of these fluctuations in prices now fluctuations price in the prices come as a result of those special problems we said that farmers encounter when marketing agricultural products if you understood those problems well you can be able to craft some of the causes of fluctuations in the prices for example one of our problems is that uh, uh agricultural products are seasonal seasonality okay now when it is harvest time everyone is harvesting the prices will drop when it is off season because few people will have that product the prices will will rise so one of the causes is that the products are perish not perishable but um one of the, the 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 issues regarding these fluctuations is, is that they are seasonal we don't produce them throughout the year so i want you to also like, just like i've done for seasonality try to go through those problems the special problems in the marketing of agriculture and try to see how try to link them to fluctuations in in the prices okay i know you are able to do that try to link them to fluctuations in uh in the in the prices of these agricultural products okay so so long as you have got a good understanding of those problems you cannot fail 
to turn the problems into causes of uh, these fluctuations. My main business that I want us to, to handle now is the effects. Because I know you are able to craft those, um, those uh, the causes. But the main issue here is the effects of price fluctuations. Now, as you can see on your screen, um, as you can see on your screen, price fluctuations cause unstable incomes. They cause unstable incomes to the farmer. They cause unstable incomes to the farmer. They cause unstable income to the farmer. That means that a farmer is not sure of how much he's going to get. You may be expecting little money, you get a lot. You may be expecting a lot, you get a little. And because of unstable income, you can't plan. Okay? If you don't know how much you are going to get, how are you going to plan? Okay? Effect number two, they discourage inst installation of capital assets. Now, capital assets are um, assets that can be used to produce other products, okay, on a farm, okay. Now, if prices are unstable, farmers fear. For example, maybe I had my money, I wanted to set up a factory, I, but I can't because I'm not sure of how much uh, the product I'm going to process is going to, to offer me. Why would I invest my money in something that I'm not sure about, okay? Then three, uh, these price fluctuations affect government revenue. Now, remember a country like ours, Uganda here, um, government earns a lot of money from these agricultural uh, pr products, okay? Now, if the prices are unstable, for example, let's assume the prices dropped, the government revenue is going to be steadily affected, and once the revenue of government is affected, you know what will happen. Other services, now, for example, me, I'm a worker. Now, my salary may be coming from uh, revenue from these agricultural products. So it can cause unstable government revenue. Then it can increase the level of risks in, in farming. These unstable prices increase, make it easier for risks to, to occur. Because remember, one of the risks are and uncertainties. One example was the... Um, uncertainty of price where you don't know how much you're going to sell your particular product then if the price is unstable it becomes difficult for a farmer to pay loan to pay borrowed money to pay credit to pay interest on loan you can be expecting a lot of money you don't get money okay and you can be expecting less money you get too much and you get excited okay so this rising and falling of price is not a good thing. Then it can have a serious strain on a country's balance of payments. Now, um, balance of payments means just the balance between what the country earns and what the country spends. Now, a country like ours here, like I said, earns foreign exchange from farming. A country like ours here earns foreign exchange from, from farming. Now, because of that, if the, price if the prices keep fluctuating, we cannot have proper planning for cannot have proper planning for um, our our country okay so we have come to there are many other of these factors but i want you to to think through most important i want you to think through what are these what are the bad things about these fluctuations okay how can a farmer how can the government handle these, the effects of price, price fluctuations? Okay. So because of time, we are going to end there, but I've given you work to think through. What are some other examples of the effects of price fluctuations? What can a farmer do? What can the government do to avoid the effects of these fluctuations? So students, for today, let's end there. Uh, till next time, you have a nice evening.